guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be filming a little chatty, get ready with me, an updated makeup routine using vegan and cruelty-free products. I have, I've done one of these in the past and nothing has changed except for the fact that I wear much less now, but this was requested and I'm just giving you a little disclaimer. You're probably not going to learn anything new about makeup, but one of you asked for me to do this on my Instagram live last night, so here I am doing it today. Follow me on Instagram at you know me underscore Hitomi. So, I usually start off with my eyebrows. I'm using the Anastasia Brow Pencil. And this is my natural skin. I just got out of the shower. I moisturize using Nyla's, um, my friend Nyla's Pond's like face lotion. But yeah, so I do have some scars. These are basically what I cover up. My routine is eyebrows and then covering up my like scars and that's it. And then sometimes I'll go in with like highlighter. But yeah, just using my little mirror here and my brows. Um, I used to get a lot of criticism about the way that I filmed that, fill, filled them in because um, I guess that I made them really thick in the past. So now I'm just very light handed. I have the angled brow Anastasia brow definer in ebony and I go very light handed. I pretty much do uh, little swift motions as if I'm drawing little sparse hairs into my eyelashes and, I mean, eyebrows. You have to be very light-handed and take your time like you're painting a canvas, girl. I also kind of wanted to talk about spirit and love and happiness. I've mentioned this a few times before, but, you know, I probably will repeat myself a lot when it comes to my spiritual growth and just recovering from depression because I've been using these methods and so I still... Uh, use them every single day, so I mention them a lot, but I've been keeping track of my mood on a scale of 1 through 10 every single day, and I have just been really proud of myself because I haven't had a horrible breakdown in, in like a month, which is a record for me. Like, I haven't had a horrible, I don't know, a spell of depression, um, and for the past like week or so, my mood has been, I've only had a 5, that was the lowest number that I've had in the past like two weeks and everything else has been seven and up. Yesterday was a 10, today is a 10. I just feel so happy and productive and fulfilled and excited about life every single day and it's just, it's just been very mellow and I think the biggest reason in this moment for that is because I'm finally pursuing everything that I've ever said I had interest in. Like, going to school, like that's actually something that I'm I'm doing now and I'm working towards and I'm just, I don't feel the pressure to do it. I don't feel like I have to do certain things, but I really want to. And I've been meeting with this designer and she's been giving me all these tips and I've been like planning, planning different merch and hopefully by the end of next month I'll have a website where I'll have some photography, some poetry, and um, maybe some t-shirts. So that's kind of my, what I'm doing right now. And it's basically just the fact that not only have I been speaking my desires, but I've been really pursuing them. And I think that's just a problem that we all have is like saying what we want without actually taking the action or making the time to get it. Like, I, I do this all the time. I tell you guys what I'm interested in. I want to do dance. I want to get better at guitar. I want to learn digital animation. Uh, I want to do kickboxing. Like, I want to do all these things. And these are like small, short-term things. I want to get better at yoga and do aer aerial yoga. And it's so easy to say it, and it's very good to say it, just to speak it out into the universe and to will it to happen. But then you also have to, like, make the time. And instead of watching YouTube videos, I'm, like, going to fabric shops. Instead of, like, usually watching YouTube I don't have a TV, so, like, YouTube and Netflix are kind of the only waste of time things that I do. But instead of doing that, I'm reading books on feminism and just, I don't know, trying to just expand what I know, expand my perspective by just learning more, you know? learning what I can do, what I'm capable of, and that's what makes life really exciting is not only having these passions, but actually pursuing them. What I tell people when they like have a certain goal is to write that end goal down, write their end goal, and then just write the steps that they think they could get, how they could get to that end goal, you know, what steps they can take. And sometimes they can't fill in that blank, you know, they can't like figure out a certain way to get to that end goal, and I'm like, okay, give it some time and ask around, ask other people what they think, Ask the universe, you know, try and find signs, listen to signs from the universe. And by that I mean just be open to receiving answers in different ways. Even if it's just an ad or even if it's just like some random person that you meet, what they tell you. Um, for example, I was at this poetry slam. This was like when I first moved to New York and I had no friends. 
and uh, in New York, and it was really intense. I didn't share anything. It was like a trans poetry slam. It was all about like gender identity. That was the theme of the night. And um, so it was just really intense. It just made me feel some type of way. And I felt like slightly triggered after. I just felt very empathetic for everyone's journey. And I felt how hard it must have been to just go through those changes and to feel unaccepted by society in such a big way. Like gender is such a like a way that we identify people, girl, boy, and it just weighed on me a lot, but, um, so then this random girl and I started talking, and then she told me about this thrift store that, like, uh, sells by the pound, and she just got me really excited and, like, reminded me of what I enjoy doing, which sounds so random and maybe even superficial, but we were just talking, and she, like, randomly mentioned this thrift store that she goes to, and I was like, damn, wait, I forgot how much I love doing that. Like, I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna film a video. And that's when, like, I started to film more hauls, um, when I was, like, starting my channel up again. This was, like, literally when I first moved to New York, and that's when I started, like, filming and uploading consistently. Uh, but that was, like, even something as small as that is, like, someone, like, reigniting this little spark in me or just a reminder. She just reminded me, like, that I enjoy doing that and that other people enjoy watching me do that. And, um, the thrift store, by the way, is a Goodwill. It's in Long Island City. I haven't been in a while. It's in Long Island City. It's just a Goodwill. I don't know what it's called, but they do sell by the pound. Um, you have to sift through a lot of crap. Um, but that's not even the point. The point... Oh, shoot. I don't even know what is going on with these brows. The point is that she just... I felt like I had to be there that night to talk to that girl. She was really, really sweet also, and she was just really kind. Mm -mm -mm. And you can also just set up reminders in your own life. Um, I like to look at the stars. It's just a reminder how like small and insignificant we are. I know that sounds really cliche, but it truly does. Like, first of all, the night sky is so beautiful, especially when the sky the stars are visible. But I'm always like standing there in shock and amazement and in awe that this is the universe. Like this is life. Like life really doesn't have any rules. I always like remember that when I'm looking at the stars. Like, I'm just here existing on this, like, ball. What is really stopping me from doing anything that I want? Like, it's just a miracle that I'm even here, that I'm even existing, that, like, years of evolution have led me to this point, and that I, like, beat all other odds, you know, all sicknesses, and that I'm in good health, that I can see and taste and feel. Like, I'm so grateful for my senses, because some people are born blind, and some people are born with other kinds of disabilities and I just feel so grateful for my health and I just want to take advantage of that while I'm healthy, you know? This video is going in a lot of different directions, but this is usually how long my brows take because I just am very anal about them. And that doesn't that's not to say that I do them perfectly, but I just really try, you know what I mean? Like I'm trying. Oh wow. That was really dark. This is a very mediocre video. Like I said, you probably won't learn anything new. That one's a little dark. Oh well, man. I got my eyebrows done and I'm used to having like a bunch of like excess little pieces of hair that make it look better, but those are all gone because the, the lady at the eyebrow threading place like obviously cleaned them up. Not my best work today, but I really don't care. Using the same Josie Moran or Jose Moran Vibrancy Foundation. This is really great vegan, gluten-free, paraben-free. It's not the best for oily skin, but I don't care. Um, and then sometimes I'll go in with my Tarte Amazonian Clay like concealer type thing. It's really, really great, but my skin is pretty tan now, so it's probably not going to fit. Yeah. Yeah, man. There we go. I'm just really excited about learning. See, even this is so light. I don't know what to do. But I'm just going to use this to cover up my pimples or my scars. I only have two actual pimples on my face. Everything else is a scar. But I ordered this oil called Tamanu oil because uh, this makeup artist told me that it got rid of all of her acne. She just rubbed it on her face. She has really clear skin and it made all the acne go away. So I'm going to film a video, see if it actually works. It's also very great for acne scars. That's mostly what I saw from online. But I just ordered it like four days ago so it should be here soon and I'll film a video if it does work so that you guys don't have to like waste your money or yeah go through trial and error with it so 
Maybe that'll help get rid of the scars on my mouth. Mmm, and I, I just ate, oh my god, the best vegan pizza ever last night from Screamer's Pizza. It was a buffalo chicken pizza, but it had cauliflower and hot sauce and vegan cheese, and it was amazing, and that was like the first oily thing I've eaten in like a week or so, so kind of gave me a, a zit. Um, yeah, but I'm not, I feel like I used to be kind of like a very intense vegan where I was like, how dare you? eat meat, how dare you harm animals, like, I'm disgusted, but honestly, the thing is, a lot of people just don't know the truth about the meat industry. Um, it's not only, like, an animal welfare type thing, it's also almost like an unethical thing when it comes to the government, we kind of are being lied to, um, and being told how great meat is for us and how great of a source of protein it is for us, but there are, like, really great alternatives, and we're not told the, like, the negative effects of meat basically and I just know that not everyone has the education and it's just not easy for everyone to implement veganism into their life so I'm not like angry at people when they're not vegan I don't judge them I can sit next to someone eating meat and I'm not like throwing up like I'm just really mellow about it like I'm just chilling here with my veggies like you can do your thing um yeah I'm just I'm just not here to judge anyone I feel like it would just really hurt me if I spent my time judging people so yeah, even if someone's, like, life choices are different than mine, um, the only thing I can do is just to keep spreading my truth and my message, and hopefully it'll rub off on people, hopefully I can lead from example, but I don't think I could ever be someone who's, like, only friends with vegan people, or, like, refuses to be friends with non-vegan people, because then I'm not enlightening anyone, like, it, I think it's good to hang out with people who are different from you, because you can help each other grow, and you're not, like, the same exact person. You know, I feel like it is good to hang out with people who have similar energy as you, but you shouldn't restrict yourself to only vegans or, I don't know. I love interacting with new different kinds of people, different races, different like social classes, like anything. Like I'll talk to homeless men, but anyways, hourglass, uh, powder, and ethereal light. I just put it under my eyes. I kind of use it to set my foundation, even though it is technically... A highlighter that's what it's like known to be a lighting powder but yeah this is an ethereal light and I just use that and sometimes I'll just stop here like I just want to get rid of my scars and make my face look a little bit more alive and then the only reason that I use this powder is because I am so oily sorry this towel is not the cutest but I'm using this L'Oreal true match just to put a little bit more color back in since the foundation kind of got rid of that and this isn't vegan, I still haven't replaced it, there's just so much product and I don't like to spend money on stuff that I don't need anyway, so I'm just gonna wait till it's gone in like 10 years from now. Yeah, so my makeup look is extremely natural. This is the Becca bronzer, which I don't even like need to waste my time doing because I am tan, but sometimes I'll just lightly do a little like, little jaunt like that. <laughs> Yeah, I hope you guys are feeling good. My energy feels, I guess, a little bit intense, but in a very good way, in a very productive way. I feel just like a boss woman right now, trying to make shit happen in my life, trying to make my dreams come true. And then I'll just try and blend everything together. I mean, this is so minimal, and like my scars are still kind of visible after using the foundation, so... I don't know. I don't really care that much. Okay, and then um, I'm still using the Benefit Watts Up highlighter, which isn't vegan, but there is a vegan one that someone told me about, so I'll link that below. I have to double check if it's vegan, but someone told me it's like very creamy, just like this one, and yeah. I also, I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram, but the makeup artist from the Galore shoot is so sweet, and we've been talking. I think she's going to come on my channel, and we're going to do some cool pixie looks using some of her products. She knew a lot of makeup products I didn't know, which is like, you know, bound to happen, but um, I'm pretty sure she does know of a lot of vegan options <laughs> when it comes to makeup. So I'm really excited to have her on my channel. She was so, so sweet and just really good at makeup. I posted some pictures on my Instagram from it. Uh, but yeah, this stuff is very creamy. I do like it. You just kind of have to really blend it in, otherwise it'll look like a line. You'll see the line. 
I don't know if I said, but this is Benefits Watts Up. I've had this since junior or senior year, which is insane. And then I put it on my nose. And then, yeah. See, nothing new. You're not learning anything new here. And that is what I do for my face. Uh, sometimes I'll add... I put on chapstick before, but... <gasps> okay. This little tart thing. Uh, I have some fibers on my tart tin. But anyways, this is um, Tarts Exposed, and it's very subtle. I put on just a little bit. And yeah. That is it. I think I want to get um, a new eyelash curler because my eyelashes are very long, but uh, I just lost my eyelash curler so I haven't been using it. But now I'm just going to spray this. It's a 10. This is a huge thing that my mom got me. Bless her soul. Shout out to anyone who's here because of my mom who um, told you about my channel from her work at Target. Um, Glendale Mall. whichever I don't know which mall it is actually. But I know it's somewhere in Glendale. So yeah, I just spray this. I haven't been using shampoo or conditioner in my hair. Just because I want to see what it's like. And it's been fine. And then I just put my It's a 10 leave-in conditioner. Uh, I thought that my hair was like pretty knotty. I mean, pretty not knotty. Let's see. My dress is from American Apparel. I'm just wearing this because I'm filming a little like closet tour right after this. But, yeah. Oh. So, yeah, I usually start at the bottom after I try and gauge how naughty my hair is. Usually it's not this bad after the shower. But then I'll run my fingers through. Long hair, you really do have to take care of it, man. It just gets naughty so easily. Uh, like, hopefully this isn't giving anyone anxiety. Okay. Should be good. Beauty is such a strange thing. <laughs> because so many people are like, but you're so beautiful, how could you be, how could you ever be sad? But, like, the things that happen in your life and the way that, what people tell you is kind of like what you believe. So, like, I was always told and I told myself that I was, like, really ugly or I was, like, the the least attractive of my family, of my siblings, or I just was always told that I was fat or that I was too skinny. People were just always judging the way that I looked and the way that I acted. They'd be like, oh, she's the shy one, isn't she? And it just made me very self-loathing, very self-conscious. And, and now I look like this. Like, I looked very Asian when I was younger, and then I looked very Hispanic, and I just was kind of uncomfortable with my race because I was bullied for being Asian. Um... And so it was really weird, like, growing up, I never felt beautiful ever, and then I just recently have been feeling beautiful, and then I put myself on the internet, and everyone's, like, sees me now, and sees how happy I am, and thinks, oh, well, no wonder she's happy, or they think, how could she ever be sad, but it's like, my upbringing was very different. I mean, you can't see any of, like, my journey now, but this is just, like... Everything in my life has led me to this point, and this is what you're seeing, but there's so much more that has happened, or that I have felt, or that has been told to me that was just incorrect, and I've only recently, like, healed from all that, and I'm just, like, seeing things as they really are, seeing the truth of my reality. But yeah, so I'm trying to be kind of gentle. Here we go. Ooh. I know it sounds like I'm really ripping my hair, but I'm not. I'm being rather gentle. Also, like, the ends of my hair uh, were dyed a while ago. A while ago I did ombre, and that has grown out. But the ends are dry because of that, from, like, two years ago. Beauty is weird because it is so fleeting, and it is so, like, sought after. It is so admired and appreciated, and people are valued because of the way that they look. And it's just so strange because, like... For example, you see homeless men on the street, and you see these videos on Facebook of them getting makeovers, and you're like, oh, wow, like, what a handsome man. He could totally get a job, he could totally, you know, make things happen in his life, but just because he wasn't able to take care of himself, like, no one could see that. And I get that looks are very important in this society, and first impressions are everything, but I just hate how much, it scares me how much value is placed on that. And I just constantly am thinking, like, 
I don't want to hold on to this and be afraid of getting older. I just want to keep going with the flow and not be like attached to this like current state of how I look, you know? I feel like I'm kind of a little bit of a broken record because I'm talking about this a lot, but this is what I believe in. So I will just constantly preach it because it's really freeing uh, to not feel that weight and not feel that pressure to look beautiful. Like, that's not important. It's kind of like that quote, like, when we die, like, our graves are all the same or our coffin is the same size or whatever. What really, at the end of the day, matters, I think, is, like, what you did in this life and how you helped other people, how you made other people feel, like, the change that you made in this life that was positive. I think that's what's more important than just, like, beauty. But I do understand that beauty can make some things more possible. Uh, so, yeah, it's a really fine line. But... What do I know? I'm just a 19 year old girl living in New York, having gone through some shit. <laughs> a lot of you guys are saying I should be on America's Next Top Model. I haven't been watching it because I don't have a TV, I don't have like HBO or anything, any anywhere to watch it, but I used to love America's Next Top Model. I just don't know if I could handle it, and I wouldn't be able to post anything. Um, I have no access to Wi-Fi when I'm on it. Um, but I guess I'll maybe give it a shot. I feel like I would um, talk about veganism and spirituality, like, you know when they have the little confessions? I would just be like, so, um, I'm vegan, and it makes me really happy, or like, I would be meditating a lot, I don't know. I feel like it would be fun to bring a little bit of a, like, a spiritual aspect, and to like, show people of the world that, but the modeling part intimidates me a little bit, because, I don't know. I don't want to be like so worried about my weight or the way that I look. I kind of like to mess around with it so it gets some volume and then I'll do my part. This dress, like I said, is from uh, American Apparel. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I also just wanted to add that I don't wear makeup every day. A lot of the time I don't. I know I'm going to get a bunch of comments that say, you don't need to wear makeup, but sometimes makeup is fun. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I love you so much, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!